So, funny story, which isn't that funny. <laughs> it's serious. I think that I might have tonsillitis again for the second time in three months, which is so annoying. Like, <laughs> give me a break. I'm actually really struggling. I haven't spoken a word all day. <laughs> and I basically decided to film this video just because I thought it might be good for my brain to like say some words today. <laughs> Does that even make sense? But also, I have been actually surprisingly consistent with filming these videos of books I want to read in the month coming. Now, I was back in London earlier this week and I've picked up my next stash of books, my next capsule bookshelf uh, for the month of July and I took back all of the books that I've already read uh, back to London um, and they're now in storage. So I basically wanted to run through all of the books that I have. They are in <laughs> this bag. This bag genuinely is the biggest money saver I think I've ever made because this is actually the exact size you can take on a flight for free. And don't you think that is way bigger than you'd expect? It's like it fits under the seat on an aeroplane and they never question it. Um, I bought it online and it's the exact dimensions that you're allowed and it fit all of these books in it so i am actually very impressed because best believe while i will happily splurge on like 25 books i will not be paying for a suitcase on that damn flight if i can avoid it and so for my recent travels to like morocco um to and from paris this is what I've been using, um, and actually, it's been very good. So basically, I wanted to do a merge of a book haul, but also books that I want to read in July, because it's the same list. <laughs> um, if I made two videos, you'd be, I think you'd be pretty miffed by the end of the second one, realizing you've watched the same thing twice. So, ooh, this seemed like a much better idea in my head. This is, it's actually, <laughs> I'm suffering, I'm struggling right here, but, the show must go on. I got rent money to pay. <laughs> it's the first of the month tomorrow. Actually, I'm in a crisis. This is the problem with treating this channel like my close friend's story, like I just unload. You can tell that I haven't spoken to anyone today. <laughs> but basically, my apartment that I was meant to be moving into tomorrow cancelled on me. So, I, as of 11am, don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> I don't know where I'm sleeping tomorrow night. So, that's really fun and exciting. I haven't actually packed my bags yet either. I also just did laundry, and it's like nearly midnight, and it's, I don't think it's going to dry in time. Anyway, <laughs> it's carnage, it's chaos, as always. I also can't hear out of my right ear. Eh, who needs it? I've heard enough, quite frankly. Um, yeah, the last 24 hours has been testing me, um, but we're here, we're still smiling, it's all good, and I'm going to give you a book haul. Um, it could be the last thing you ever see from me. <laughs> It's gonna be fine. Right, okay, the first book that I have with me is this one. This is The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozeki. Firstly, glorious, gorgeous spine. I'm absolutely in love with it. Um, I think this book cover is also brilliant. Um, I really, really like it. And I've been listening to this as an audiobook, and I'm very nearly done, but I wanted to have the physical edition here with me so that I could talk about it on YouTube, which is, was a big, bold, brave decision for me because this is a literal break. Weighed down my bag considerably, but it's fine. <laughs> We're doing fine. I'm probably not gonna go into too much detail about these books because I am actually trying to do a challenge where I read 30 books in 30 days, and these pretty much are gonna be the books, which is why there's gonna be a general theme that they're all quite short. In fact, you can probably sort of see <laughs> the average length. It's, it's not your classic way of doing a book haul, but <laughs> I'm making it work for me. Okay, the next book is this one. This is Department of Speculation by Jenny Offill. Beautiful, says the Financial Times. It is about life unvarnished, yet every bit of it made profound by Offill's glorious prose. Sounds good enough for me, what's it about? They used to be young, brave, and giddy with hopes of their future. They married, had a child, and skated through the small calamities of family life. But then, slowly, quietly, something changed. Okay, so Jenny's not telling us anything. And I'm fine with that, because I'm going to find out <laughs> very soon. Um, the next book is The Death of Vivek Oji. Now, I just read uh, You Made a Fool Out of Death with Your Beauty, which is also by Emezi, so I thought if I liked that one, I'll probably like this one too, because I've heard people rave about it. Um, I really like their writing. Um, I think they're super, super talented. So, they burned down the market the day Vivek Oji died. This is the story of an overprotective father. Oh, no an overprotective mother, the exact opposite, and a distant father, and the heart-wrenching tale of one family struggle to understand their child, 
just as Vivek learns to recognise himself. It says unforgettable characters, say no more, that's what I like. Do, 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 do. Oh, this one is short. Um, this is Notes on Grief. I am writing about grief in my own book and I thought that I should learn from the master, Chimamanda. Everything she does, she does perfectly, so... I'm excited to read this. In this tender and powerful essay, expanded from the original New Yorker text. Oh, she's writing about her father, okay. Um, she's a self-confessed daddy's girl, remembering her beloved father. Notes on Grief is at once a tribute to a long life of grace and wisdom, the story of a daughter's fierce love for a parent, and a revealing examination of the layers of loss and the nature of grief. That is exactly what I want to be reading. Which sounds quite morbid and sad, but I think it's really gonna help to um, inform the writing that I'm doing. So yeah, there's that. Next, we have Grown Ups. I honestly, I saw this in a bookshop and just really liked the cover. Um, I don't know anything about it. Other people's children, always, everywhere. Ida is a 40 year old architect, single and starting to panic. She's navigating Tinder and contemplating freezing her eggs, but forces these worries to the back of her mind as she sets off to the family cabin for her mother's 65th birthday. Okay, that sounds interesting. This is a book that has been highly recommended to me. This is Assembly by Natasha Brown. Again, a very slim thing. Come of age in the credit crunch. Be civil in a hostile environment. Step out into a world of go home vans. Go to Oxbridge, get an education, start a career. Do all the right things. Buy a flat, buy art, buy a sort of happiness. But above all, keep your head down, keep quiet and keep going. Whoa. Okay, damn. This is described with many superlatives on the cover. Exquisite, captivating, extraordinary, elegant, stunning, electrifying. It's in the pile. This pile doesn't seem to be going down, but next one is We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. This is a classic, so I'm not going to read the description, but I will be talking about it in more detail next month. Next we have da, 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 some Haruki Murakami. This is South of the Border, West of the Sun. Now I bought this and Sputnik Sweetheart. Hang on, let me find it. There she is, these two. And I don't know what these are about, but I also don't want to know. I don't want to read the blurbs because I already know that I like Murakami as an author. So I'm just going to approach these completely raw. Is that... Is that a word that's okay to use? <laughs> We're raw dogging it with these two books. We're not reading the blabs. Maybe I'm just trying to save time. Maybe I, <laughs> maybe my throat is sore. <laughs> this book is called Lucky Breaks and I saw this in a bookstore uh, in Paris and I've been really, really wanting to buy it. And then when I was in London, I bit the bullet and here it is in my hand. Um, because I believe this is Ukrainian. In Lucky Breaks, we encounter anonymous women from the margins of Ukrainian society, their lives upended by the ongoing conflict with Russia. In stories of linguistic verve and dark, absurdist wit, this is about how trauma seeps into the mundane as in, and isn't... My brain glitched. And is a story of survival. Um, this is Lucky Breaks and I... This is a top priority for me to read. I just read my first Ukrainian book, which was... Death and the Penguin. And there's reviews coming of that soon too. It's all exciting. <gasps> the new Madeline Miller short story, author of Song of Achilles and Circe. This is absolutely tiny. I think I also got completely ripped off for this. It was like 10 pounds and it's 50 pages long, but in size 72 font. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I do think this is maybe a bit of a money spinner from Madeline Miller, but I kind of respect the hustle. I do, I respect it. Could this have been released just online? Yes. But is she the woman of the moment because Song of Achilles is banging? Yes, also, so I can see why um, she's published this little book in the meantime before her next novel. And you know what? I'm in the palm of that woman's hand, so I will be reading it. <laughs> Without shame. Money well spent, I think. Anyway, next one is The Disaster Tourist, which could be my autobiography title. Yona is nearing burnout working for Jungle, a sinister soul-based company that specializes in tours to ecological disaster zones. When one of Yoda's bosses sexually harasses her, the company tries to bribe Yona with a free tour to a different country. Oh my God, that's wild. I just did like a mini sit up, <laughs> no reason. So they send her to this little island off the coast of Vietnam, uh, known for its giant sinkhole. There you go. But she becomes trapped on the island and stumbles upon a discovery that puts her in grave danger. I cannot wait for this. There were twists and turns just in the blur. Uh, I think we're about halfway through, guys. This is The New Me, which 
I've not actually heard good things about. <laughs> but that made me more intrigued to read it. Basically, I went looking for this in a bookstore, and the member of staff said to me, oh, I read it and it wasn't good. <laughs> and for some reason, instead of deterring me, that made me more determined to purchase it. Because then I was like, well, now I want to know <laughs> why it's bad. Which maybe is a weird character trait. I think alarming, to be honest. In a windowless office, a woman explains something from her real non-work life about the frustration and indignity of returning her online shopping to her colleagues. Okay, one wears a top knot, another checks her pedometer. How is this a novel? <laughs> I'm intrigued, okay. We will find out, that is the new me. Maybe I'll be a new me after reading it. I'm intrigued by the little fly on the cover too. What does it mean? Are we gonna be a fly on the wall? Or does she smell? <laughs> it could be either. Oh, this next one was sent to me by the publishers. I want to say Picador. And he's right. This is Concerning My Daughter, which is translated from Korean. Ooh, the text is black on purple. Not gonna lie, there's a certain time in the night where my contact lenses stop working. It might be now. When a mother allows her 30-something daughter to move into her apartment, she wants for her what many parents might say they want for their child. A steady income, and even better, a good husband and a good job to start a family with. Okay, that is giving me exactly the same vibe as Convenience Store Woman, which is a book that I really loved. It's also giving me the same vibes as Kim Jong-un, born 1982, and the author of that is actually quoted on the back cover. So we'll see how it differs, uh, how it is similar, um, and what it tells us about Korean society, but also wider society in general. Oh, okay, this next one is The Fortune Men, which was shortlisted for the Booker Prize and described as a novel on fire. So, it's in the pile, which uh, could collapse at any moment. But then again, so could I. Join the club, mate. <laughs> Get in line. Okay, the next one is The Woman. In the purple skirt. I love Japanese book titles. This is also translated. Um, I want to become friends with the woman in the purple skirt. But how? Not a question from me, a question from the blab. We'll find out. That's another one that I've been sort of eyeing up. In the bookstore. Ooh, a classic. You know when you see that shade of blue, you know it's gonna be something special. This is Nadia, I think. And the cover says C'est moi. I believe it is translated from French. Would it be good to aim to read the original French? Yeah, probably. But sometimes I just gotta go easy on myself and I'm gonna read it in English. Beauty will be convulsive or will not be at all. What a quote. I'm really excited to read this. Um, this is actually another book that Dakota recommended to me. Um, I did a whole video on her recommendations, but I couldn't find this one at the time. And now I have it in my grasp. La, aha, Just Kids by Patti Smith. I actually did read this on the plane, back here. And, you know, I have mixed feelings on it. I expected to enjoy this more than I actually did. I think that I'm realizing that I don't really enjoy memoirs as much as I maybe thought I did. Like, just memoirs about people's careers. I don't know, I've heard this really hyped up. Like a lot of people say that Just Kids is one of their favorite books of all time. And for some reason, I just didn't, I didn't get that. I definitely still thought it was good, don't get me wrong, but um, yeah, I expected it to be extraordinary. And it was just good. Just kids, there we go. I guess that was a bit of a review too. This is an arc, which means advanced readers copy. Not because I'm an advanced reader, <laughs> because I'm reading it in advance of publication. Definitely not an advanced reader. So this is Isaac and the Egg. Um, I'm not sure what the actual cover will look like when it comes out, but this one's very minimal, and then all the reviews are kind of like on the back. Truly one of the most beautiful stories you'll ever read. Um, I think that this is going to be quite a major release in the coming months. It comes out in August 2022. I want to read it before then, so I feel like I've got a little exclusive, you know? Oh, this is a book that I've been wanting to read for ages, literally just because of the cover. Like, I think that is so stunning, even though it's so basic. I really, really love it, um, and the title is Pure Colour, so it also makes sense. But I thought this was such a stunning book, and it's very rare that I buy uh, hardbacks for myself. In fact, I don't know when the last time I bought a hardback for myself was. Well, there's actually another one in the back, <laughs> so I actually did buy two. But there's a reason for that, it's because the covers are absolutely stunning, and I wanted to make sure that I got my filthy mitts 
on this cover. So there you go. Here we are just living in the first draft of creation, which was made by some great artist who is now getting ready to tear it apart. Pure Colour tells the story of life from beginning to end. It is a galaxy of a novel, explosive, celestially bright, huge and streaked with beauty. It is a contemporary bible. Say no more, Sheila. I'm ready to read this. By the way, the author's name is Sheila. I, <laughs> that's not like a weird saying. Say no more, Sheila. And then the other hardback that I bought is this one. I'm actually not sure how to say that word. Where is my phone? My guess is Teokboki. Tokboki. Oh, Tokboki. 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 Okay. I want to die, but I want to eat Tokboki. I bought this because it is translated by Anton Herr, who also translated Cursed Bunny immaculately well, incredibly well. Um, and I met him at a book festival, and I just thought he was great. So um, when I saw this book and this exquisite cover, I needed it um, in my life. So here it is. And then the final book in this little book haul, well, quite a big book haul, <laughs> to be honest, is this one, Cold Enough for Snow. This is a Fitzcarraldo edition, um, which means they have this very distinctive blue cover. A mother and daughter travel from abroad to meet in Tokyo. All the while they talk about the weather, horoscopes, clothes, and objects. About family, distance, and memory. So I think this is gonna be a really interesting conversation, like an intergenerational conversation. And I know this publishing house specializes in translations, but I, I don't think this is one, but there you go, Cold Enough for Snow. Rounds off this book haul. So those are the books that I'm hoping to read in July. Hopefully I can make some more videos in July and my throat doesn't completely close up. I honestly don't know what I'm gonna do if it does, but <laughs> you'll be the first to know, I'm sure. I'm sure there'll be a vlog um, before I get a doctor's appointment. So all the best, stay in touch, have a wonderful day. Um, love you loads, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.